Hello, hello, welcome. This is Theo from digitaltaxidermy.co.uk and this is going to be a bit of a tutorial one. Welcome to our space dungeon. So, you've got a 3D printer, which is brilliant. That makes you a very cool person. But what about 2D printing with your 3D printer? Well, this video is going to be all about how to make a lovely t-shirt like this, which you could do. It's going to use a screen printing technique and a 3D printer and some digital software. So there's going to be some things you need to buy, like meshes like this or ink. But if you have a 3D printer, particularly an FDM one, it might work on resin, but I'm thinking about FDM printers here, then that's what you're going to need. I'll give you a quick rundown of what is required for this project. You are going to need, obviously, a 3D printer. You're going to need a computer. This tutorial is for Windows machines. I can do another one for programs that work on Macs or Linux. Um, you're going to need some plain t-shirts or something to print onto. You will need to go and get yourself some screen printing ink. This is an old tub of that. But you can get it off online retailers. You will need one of these screens, a little meshy thing like this that is going to be very important. You're going to need a squeegee. This is a proper screen, screen printing squeegee, but I think, I reckon you could get away with using just a window cleaning squeegee. Um, and an iron as well at the end of it. But that's about it. Oh, and paper and spoons and a few other bits. But that's the stuff that you may or may not own. If you've got those things, right. First thing you are going to need to do is make the stencil, which is a really thin 3D printed stencil like this or like this, just a couple of layers thick. So it's off to the digital world to make yourself and print yourself a stencil. This is how that is done. Okay, so this is how you are gonna do it. We're gonna use any image editing software that you like, I am going to be using paint.net. You could use Microsoft Paint, Photoshop, GIMP, whatever. The image editing stuff, as long as you're comfortable with the image editor, then that's quite straightforward. And we can also use 3D Builder as well. So this is a piece of software that only works on Windows. So if you are a Mac or Linux user, my apologies. Um, but if you, you can do this in Blender, which is an amazing piece of software. If you would like me to do a Blender tutorial, I am very happy to do one, but you will need to leave a comment. Let me know, I'll do, I'll do it. I, I really wanna do it, but unfortunately, 3D Builder is more straightforward. It's quicker in 3D Builder, but entirely possible in Blender. So anyway, this is your stencil. I have already done an image, but I'm gonna do the text that goes with my image for our logo. Um, I've typed it out, choose a font you want, but you need to think you are going to be making a stencil. And if you want your stencil to be really reusable and easy to use, you want every bit connected. So the black bits are going to be where the holes are, which is where the ink is going to go through, and the white bits will be plastic. Um, this font that we're using here is quite good because actually everything's sort of linked up. It's going to be fiddly, but there's no sort of islands of unconnected stuff apart from the eyes have a little dot of white surrounded by black. Now, there are two options. You can just think to hell with it and you could use some sort of mounting glue spray or just be very careful with your placement and do that. But it's going to be fiddly. So I'm going to do a proper stencil with everything's connected. Uh, you could use a stencil font, it's probably easiest. But as I have an island here, I need to make sure that I've got it connected. So I'm just going to put a few little white blocks in. Now this is gonna be very small, just to connect up those bits. It's slightly uh, weird. I'm not sure I even like this with the holes in there, but there we go. That is what it looks like. Digital taxidermy. There we go, I can maybe fill in later. So I've got my image, I've saved it. Save it somewhere you know it. It's a, make it a reasonable sized image, but the, don't go for millions of pixels, but you know, don't go for like 200 square either, because it will come out pixely. Now, we need to turn this into a 3D file, which luckily 3D Builder, 3D Builder, will do. So I'm going to open up 3D Builder. It's going to open up. I'm going to open a new scene. I've got 3D Builder. What I need to do is insert, add an object. I want to load an image. I'm going to load the image I've saved. 
and there we go it loads sometimes this can take a little while sometimes it doesn't so there we go but this sort of looks like a stencil but it's far too thick so actually what we're going to do we're going to inverse it with this button up here there we go and it's inversed and you can get various all these other things so the smooth don't need to play with because that's just going to do horrible stuff to your thing levels is the kind of how much detail there is i assume higher is better yeah you can sort of see like around the curves but if it goes too far you get all this weird extra stuff so i'm quite happy with that import the image okay i now have a 3d version of this what i need to do now is create so for your stencil you want to make it two layers thick for your 3d printer because i think one layer isn't quite thick enough and two is enough to block the ink. And that's all we need to do with screen printing is block the ink. So I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to resize it. I know my cube needs to be 0 0.4. This is the most important measurement, 0 0.4 millimeters high. So if I'm printing at a 0 0.2 layer height, which is enough with a 0 0.4 lozel, I'm gonna get two layers. So that's fine. Oh, no, except I just need to go 0 0.4 and press accept then I know the width of my stencil is going to be 200, I'm going to make it 210 actually, just in case, give me a bit of overlap, so that's fine, 210 mil, so that's nice and wide, and the width of gap I know, because I measured it, I want it to actually be 60, so 60, except, there you go, now this is the size of the stencil, I now need to move this around, and 3D Builder is the only bit of software I know with this weird selection thing that you have to click off to unselect rather than click on. So that's just annoying, to be honest. Um, then I can just drag the corners, scale it down so it's smaller than the stencil. Then grab the stencil, click off the thing, click that, click off, drag the stencil. Oh, no, I'm still on scale. I want to be on move. Whoops. Grab it. Drag it down, there you go. So just gonna move it around so it's sort of in the middle. Digital taxidermy. Now click so click off so the stencil is not selected, but the text is selected. Just move it oh, no, I think it'll be fine. Then I'm going to go edit, subtract. And there we have the hole subtracted through the stencil. Boom. Now file, save as. Uh, it will want to, let's just put it in my current print folder. Um, we want to save it as an STL. So let's save it as an STL. Then we can boot up Cura. Cura is there. Open up the file that I want. There we go. Um, that's interesting that it's saying it's not watertight. That normally isn't an issue from 3D Builder. But you know what? For now, I'm going to ignore that because I know it's a fairly straightforward mesh. And I think Secura will still do it. I'm also, to save time, I'm going to turn ironing, make sure ironing is off. Because, well, it's off anyway, that's good. Um, because it's not needed, really, to be honest, in this setting. It's just going to add a load of time to print time. Slice it, and you're done. Slice it, print it. Once you have done your stencil, it is time you're going to have to mount it, okay? The stencil is going to have to be mounted onto your screen. I'm going to use some, well, just sticky tape, but masking tape, something like that. A good, strong tape would do. If you've done a multi-part stencil, this is where you might have to use some spray adhesive or something like that. I've steered away from doing that, but this is what you would have to do. So stick that on that's the next step so here we are what I've done is I've carefully laid out my t-shirt I have also placed inside the t-shirt a bit of paper which should stop any excess ink traveling through to the other side of the t-shirt because you don't really want that I've taped on my stencil um, just to say when I was printing the stencil especially the smaller text bit I did have to lower the print speed about 15 millimeters per second on my ender just to get it to print maybe your bed adhesion is better than mine but with the fiddly bits lower that print speed if you're having issues so this is the printing part first of all place it on get your ink i hope this old ink still works now one thing you're going to probably need 
and something to wipe your hands on so I can use this bit of paper. You're going to need somewhere to put all your inky things. You're about to have a load of stuff covered in ink that will ruin your clothes and that will make your mum really cross so don't do that. So ink. First part is I'd like to use a teaspoon to do this bit. This ink is a bit rubbish is you want to preload your stencil. Um, the stencil I've got is a bit wider than it is tall. So I'm just gonna dollop a load of ink all around the place. And this is the trickiest part of it all. Well, not this bit, but what's about to happen is you need to get everything covered in a layer of ink. So I'm very carefully just gonna start dragging this across here, backwards and forwards your ink will look better than mine, um, like this. Trying not to move the stencil, or I'm going to try not to push too hard as well. You might just want to put a few little dobs in places, because when you go for a big push, at the moment the idea is not to get ink through the mesh or through the stencil, it's just to make sure that the whole thing is nicely covered. This, it's a good idea, if you're doing several, do several in one go. It's the first time you do it, you're going to need to use a lot of ink. The second one, or third, the second or third one, you will have a lot more ink already loaded onto your mesh. So everything is now nicely covered, all the way down to the bottom. Then I'm going to give it a really good push, and this one is going to force it all the way through, get all the bits top to bottom. Now, then carefully putting your squeegee down. Lifting this up, Oy! and it pretty much worked. I missed a little bit on the ear there, but that's pretty good. I am happy with that. And that's it. You've made some t-shirts. I made a few more. Um, well done. You can make them any designs you like. It's up, entirely up to you. Let me know how you get on. If you want to see more tutorials like this, I've got a few other ideas that I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks and months. Then a like or a subscribe or a share to the channel would be absolutely fantastic. But apart from that, thanks for watching. Happy printing. Bye. Like the video, follow me around. Oh, I forgot to say that you will uh, probably need to iron these to fix the ink. Um, manufacturers, follow the manufacturer's instructions with that. Press the bell, it makes no sound. Like the video, press subscribe. I don't know why I am alive.